Hi everybody, welcome to Whiskey Mystery. I'm Phil. I'm Zipa. I was laughing. Jerry, hope your wife is having a nice uh, trip out of town. <laughs> and welcome to the live stream. Of course, so what are we doing? It is another blind challenge. We are up to number, that is actually 155. This was chosen by, oh yeah, National Parks Artist. I was like, oh, who's NPA? It's like, like the National Photographic Association. <laughs> National Parks Artist. This is one of about 150 bottles we're working through. Obviously we're halfway now and we will rank it somewhere on our shelf, which is very competitive. Bottoms doesn't get into a complicated. Yeah, we were looking at the shelf and we realized that the gap between that end of the lower shelf and the gap end of this end of the lower shelf, they could all almost be interchangeable. And I was thinking maybe there's some way we could sort of spread out the, the range a bit more again, but um, it's getting a little competitive in there. But anyway, what the hell? Okay. Oh, I had another idea. <laughs> Who would be interested in being a guest sometime? I thought when we pick a new bottle, it probably have to be in America at the moment. Anyone who picks the new bottle has the chance to get a sample of the bottle. We'll send it out in advance. And when we do the live, they can come in as a guest and give a third opinion. Is there any Pete? We'll have a third person to see. If any... fun. Now, if you, do, if you pick a bottle you don't want to be live, you could always nominate someone on the list who is prepared to do it. Um, of course, then you won't get the whiskey. So if you are interested to be a live guest to join us in a blind, which would be fun, I thought, send an email, whiskey at captain3d.com. If you look in the description, you will see um, the sharing list link and the email is always in that. Anyway, thought that would be good. Donna Pass, see Springbank 21 is still down at the end. Yes, we pushed off Springbank 10. And I think we're gonna have a little challenge with that, probably not today, but um, see if it can beat anything. I suspect it would beat Old Pontney 17, for example. Okay. Shall we get ahead, get on with the show? For the next 12 minutes, we are going to nose it, taste it, it, is, yes, it is rank it on the shelf. Oh, that's a good point, hang on. Yeah, one is yesterday's glass. Let me pour, then we'll come back. Oh, very funny color on the camera today. Big, fat, Bubbles! <laughs> yes, okay, yesterday's glass. It's very thin. No peat. No peat. I'm getting a sort of vanilla syrup. Mm. Vanilla honey syrup. A bit of grass. I'm not getting anything fainty. Nothing dirty in there. A little, maybe slight oakiness. But... One thing we know is that this is high ABV. Obviously, we have tasted it yesterday, made our notes. Look at the size of the bubbles. Oh, I know, we've got more daylight in today, so it's mixing with our artificial light. It's definitely higher than 50%, isn't it? 56. Oh, it's higher. And it's higher because... The bubble diameter is bigger, but they disappear fast. In fact, we're going to have to go into bourbon territory to get to 61%. Wow, they are. Ah. Hang on, the 61 looks even bigger. It's up there. Okay. Not a 46%er today. So the choice should be. Wow. Okay, how scary is that? Let's do um, a water pour. Hmm. Pleasant. It does smell so good. I'm going to really go heavy on the water today. No, I mean, yeah, I'm getting a touch of sulfur, a touch of magic. A touch of sulfur. Oh, so you're thinking mm. there might be something sherry or winey in here? Mm. It's fine. A sour. Fine, fine, White fina, white wine. Hang on. White wine. Um, 
uh, fermented. Let me, let me join in. Whoa, it's a blast of alcohol. Mm. My first impression there was light pale wood with a sort of vanilla honey. So I'm getting more ex-bourbon. Let me go yes. again. And, uh, dry. <laughs> oh, dry. There is dry oakiness. Sort of a dusty oak, I think. Simple. I'm not getting much food. Not much. It's not even savoury or sweet. It's actually very dry, sour, but not lemon. Sour, dry, not lemon. But um, it's a bit richer. It's not like fresh citrus, is it? It's a bit darker than that. Actually, even the colour. But, you know, we've had dark colours on... Like, we know Deanston 18 is ex-bourbon, but look at that colour. Mm. And uh, you made it a sour sponge cake. We called it sour sponge cake, did I? No, grape sponge cake, because there is a sort of a grapiness to it, but a white grape, and it, there may not be anything whiny in here. But it's definitely something fermented. Speed fermentation. Okay, let's try the nose on the one with 50% water. Let's see if that has brought anything out. And uh, you better get a uh, chocolate powder. So it is slightly more sour on the one with the water, but more malty as well. A bit more malty. Oh, now I'm getting a touch of lemon very subtle, but more grassy. It's got me up with the surface. So slightly lemon sponge cake. Slightly. A bit of chocolate powder on the top. But then there's Maybe something... Oatmeal cookie. Yeah, there's something a little sweeter like oatmeal cookie. This is basically sweet though, isn't it? It is. But not fruity. More uh, fat strips. I'm trying to hunt for something else. My first thought is this is quite simple. And actually I'll jump into the painting because I do the painting mostly off the nose. And... It really is fairly simple looking, isn't it? This light, whiny fruitiness. This little bit of pink is sort of the sour, but um, it's it's kind of slightly grapey. And then you get the pepper sprinkles are actually more now on I'm the getting palette. a touch of flower, very set of flowers. I'm not getting so much of the grapey thing today. Okay, uh, watery version. Because this is still going to be strong if this is close to 60%. Mmm. Powerful. Matthias is asking how's the finish. You know, you can have a long finish from power or you can have a long finish from aged whiskey, can't you? I think there's a bit of both going on here. I love the, the profile of fry. Or long. For me, the sweetness is not aggressive. I can't believe how strong that was with that much water. And um, I'm going to do that again, actually. Why savoury? It's a summer pot wine. That's the approach. I'm going to, I'm going to really go even more water here so this hopefully is more like 25 or 30 percent no something like that okay okay very diluted like could be below 20 percent it is quite malty there's a there is oatmeal and, and more grass is coming up. And there's a touch. Oh, and there's a bit of licorice. I was just going to say that. Um, the grassiness is a tiny licorice hint, mm, isn't it? Unusual. How are we going to do the... Okay, I think... I... I'm scared to go full blast. I'm with the part of us. Let me take... I'm going to take a tiny sip at full power. Mmm. Oh, strong. It got me very okay. Yeah. Wow. It's quite bitter at full power, isn't it? 
Yes. So I wouldn't say it's that pleasant at full power. Let's go somewhere in between. <laughs> this is super high. Yes. I'm just getting a fun sour grip, but it's not that sour. It's that you get that feel, you know, that is something is there in the background. Peter, you're right. I have forgotten the viscometer. Um, I'll put it up while we talk because it is here. I got excited. What were we talking about that got me excited? Oh, that's right. I went into guest mode, didn't I? Let's see. Bring up the viscometer. And here it goes. Off it goes. Um, I think the viscosity is, well, for a high ABV, the viscosity normally drops off. So we'll see what it is. Right, a little bit more power now. Okay, my dilemma, as usual, is this simple because it's old ex bourbon, or is it simple because it's young? <laughs> well, I am to get a very better finish, so I'm expecting me a, I'm expecting me about eighteen years, being at the finish. It's not that peppery, mm. but it's a little bit grease, a little bit, scent. sort of lemon powder, lemon rind. For cleanness. And uh, 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 grip candy. Okay, I'm going to jump in with um, uh, comparison time, obviously. This is strong, so take water and just tell me if you think it's young or old. Very, very sweet, very thick, very concentrated. And the one is opposite. Young or old? Mm, 15. I mean, okay. What, I sh what I'm really asking, do you think it is younger or older than this? Mm, it's very, uh, very, very light. Do you think it's younger or older than mm, this? I think it's older. Okay. The reason I picked it is because this is an SMWS 12 year um, Dal Ewan, but it's 57% and I, I'm pretty sure I mistook this for something that's older because of the power. Oh, we're getting short on time. Mm -hmm. I'm losing butter in mine. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to compare now. Do I go young or old on this guess? Oh, no, more funny now. I can't up to the food. a funny now. I think it's older than 12. I don't know. I mean, I, I, the first because it's very, very Syrian Monty with flip wine. Cereal Monty and wine. wine. Okay. Young or old? I'm very old. I'm over 18. I'm going to go young. And if anyone's been watching, you know that means it's really old. <laughs> <laughs> I made me draw the tap. I like the profile. Because it's not too vanilla. It's not too sour. I think it's ex bourbon. Better or worse? Also. Um, Finish the okay. thing. I can't say anymore. Oh. That is very nice. I have suffer in it. Ex bourbon and mm, Deanston 18. I prefer today. Oh, you think it's better? Hang on. You're saying it's up here? Time is up. Because the part is more just please. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, that but put up every uh, window that is summer. I put the porter, put the porter, it much better put the porter. It's not better for me. It is not. One more comparison. Another strong one. Let's take a sip of water. It's very, very strong. I mean, I've, I've... Uh, take a sip of water.
Cavalan, mm. ex bourbon. Oh, I think it's very good. I think it's the first. Is this better than mm. Deanston? Oh, I see. You know, we haven't had that Cavalan for a long time. Oh, but, but, okay, but now I'm getting a pepper. It's, it's a little bitter on the finish. A pepper. I think the Deanston is still better. Okay. Oh, you prefer Deanston or you prefer today? Um, <laughs> okay. I obviously have missed the timer, <laughs> but I do measure beforehand. This one came in at 106% of, where's my control vodka? Of 40% vodka. So 106% is kind of middle of the road, uh, a, a standard viscosity. Time for some guesses, right. Let's bring up the spreadsheet because yes, we are in um, high ABV land. Uh, where's my spreadsheet so I can scroll? Okay. Actually, before we do it, let's have a little peek. Oh, it's, it's very high. High? Um, How high do you think it is? 48. Oh, it was 39. Okay, it is a five. It is not a six, so you have a clue. Right, let's... I mean, I, I, I do not show it at the full strength. Yeah, it's too much I at full need strength. To put in. Right, so we know it's not a 60. Let's scroll down a bit, but it could be anything. Oh, it could be Kalila Unpeated. That would be funny if it's that high. Then we have a Linkwood, a Blair Athol, Edra Dower, no. Annandale, the Jake is, is Dirty Sherry, so it can't be that. Um, Deanson 9, no, that's dark, isn't it? See, it could be that Glen Lossy 8 year. That's where my mind was going. Could it be something like that? More like a sherry. I think the sherry in the Brackler. I think there's a bit of sherry in that. Oh, it could be the Glen Scotia single. It's definitely not that Cavalan. Um, oh, there's quite a lot. Kleinlish, it could be that. Don't think it's a sherry, but Craig Ellicky. Not the Glen Rothis. Little Mill, Tormor, a 30 year Tormor. Oh, oh, right. Who is guessing? Who is guessing? Papa, I'm very clear. I don't enjoy it at the full strength. Okay, you don't enjoy it at full strength. I've got to commit. Am I going young or old? It could be the Rosebank if it's... No, the Rosebank is not at high ABV. I actually make it more bitter, a booty. The more I think it make it more bitter. I... For me, I still prefer the Deanston. If I look at everything beyond the Deanston on the top shelf, they're all more interesting to me. Um, I think I'm sort of in here with it. Are you still top shelf? Are you top shelf? Mm. Right, final guess. Only with the water. Yes, only with the water, I understand. It's, it's, it's too simple. It it's is, got to be young. It is not very, uh, it's quite tough. It's quite shiny. Just, just, if that makes sense. It's very, it's very easy to take because I'm more sucker. Have you decided, darling? I am going to stick with my young and simple, and I'm going to go, I'm going with Glen Lossy, eight year old, at 58%. So you know that probably means it's a 22-year-old Kleinlish. Maybe I should pick the Kleinlish as my as my uh, backup then. What are you going for? You're going for Blair Athol. It could be it could be Ockentoshan. Could it be 30-year Tormor? A 30-year Tormor. I see a few people saying it could be the um, Man of Words. Uh, from Annandale. This is the unpeated version. It is by Sumba. <laughs> oh, Stefan! Thank you very much. Okay, that's Stefan. <laughs> Stefan's getting those super chat drams in. Much appreciated. 
Could it be a Cameron Bridge single grain? Oh! Is there any chance it's Glen Scotia? Ex-Bourbon, we picked this up at the distillery. Put Stefan's name in. Thank you very much, Stefan. We will, we are due a drawing. Well, I think you do some of our guests out here. So I think it's out. Right. I'm committing. Uh, I, I put more than you have on. I'm going to jump into the chat and see what people are guessing before um, before we go. Right, Matthias. Well, Rosebank is quite grapey and oatmeal. Oh, is it? that got to be it. But it's only fifty-four percent. It's fifty. It's fifty-three point eight percent. This is Rosebank twenty-one. Um, don't don't drink too much in case it's Rosebank because we have hardly got any left. <laughs> oh, hang on. Is there any chance it is an ex bourbon? No, 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 no. Just saying. I don't know. Mint. I'm committing to ex bourbon. Do you think there's any sherry or wininess in there? Then it does. But there is a reverse. Okay. Right. Uh, let's see. Reverse sherry. Kalila 18, Doug. Oh, it could be. Bobby J. Oh, don't know what you're responding to. Right, let me go down. <laughs> Glenrothes Cadenhead. Matt, that Glenrothes is super dark because it's uh, a sherry barrel. <laughs> Nurse Dave is going for Kalila as well. Let's see. Watchman, maybe the first Kilcarran 8 bourbon. No, that's only 46%. Uh, Donna Pass really love those old Blair Athols. You might have tried that Blair Athol, Tim, before us. Jason Coates. Hey, Jason. Um, the Roseback is, is pretty delicate. This is robust because of the power. Drink it all deeper. <laughs> right. Someone has been watching too many Ralphie. Just saying. Did I say just saying? Just pick the spring bank. Right, here we go. Whiskey 101 is going with the Linkwood 21. Last chance for me to go young or old. Right, are you ready for the reveal? ABV. Oh shit, it's 54%. Oh! Oh, that, that impressive. No, wait, hang on. Rosebank, Springbank, back to the oh, back to the spreadsheet. This is important. We need to have a serious relook at this. Hang on. Ah, uh, fifty-four. I mean, fifty-three point eight could be fifty-four as well. Can't be the long morn. Um, can't be, no. Okay, where are my numbers? Can't be the long morn. Highland Park. Black Friday is an ex-bourbon Highland Park. Now, we didn't get anything peated. Whoops, that's how you kill glasses. Can't be the PX. Cameron Bridge, could be. Glen Burgie. That's, mm, don't think so. Is a Glen Burgie 21 old particular? It could be. Let me grab that. Um, Brook Laddie 19, no, we're, we're dipped below. Wow, it's got to be, it's got to be one of these. What is it? I don't know anything about this. It's Highland Park, ex-bourbon, but I wasn't get. You said sulfur at the beginning, but it's ex-bourbon, so it's not a sherry Highland Park. And now I'm searching for funk. Good grief. It could be this. All I'm thinking oh. is it could be the Rosebank. No, but your arm, I am more to the arm. About this much. But this is a five, six hundred dollar bottle. Uh, okay. Right, everyone, concentrate. Oh, 
I don't think it tastes like I imagine a rose bank tastes like. I'm going for the spring bank. What are you going for? You're going for. Okay. I'm not getting anything funky, by the way. Are we ready for the reveal? <laughs> Part two. I'm going to jump into the chat one more time. Hang on, Ockintosh and Valange. Is that 54? What's the ABV on the Valange? I'm used. 57. <sighs> right, hang on. Glenbergi. Uh, Glen Is that what you've picked? No, the Glenbergi. Oh, okay. I'm scared now. 600 now deeper likes it. Was expecting a higher ABV to be honest. Yeah, because the bubbles. I have written 54. I could have made a mistake. Yeah, I'm it was soccer. <laughs> I thought I thought uh, 57. The rose bank is 55%. I think it's one of the Glenbergies. Oops. No, this rose bank is 53.8%. Right. Going on to age. The first letter of the age is two twenty-seven. Twenty-seven years old. It only cost us eighty-seven dollars. Oh, that's good. And it is a grain whiskey. Oh, but but. but. I've never, I've never. From Cameron Bridge. I've never known that. I've never. Did I? I've never known. But, wow, fantastic. So hang on. Uh, it is from a refill butt. So if you were picking up sherry, mm. that would be it. Okay, let me sh let me show you. Mm, this is. Can tilt the camera a little. Cameron Bridge, single grain. Uh, this is all particular, by the way. A 27 year old. Just want to point out that it uh, is not eight years old. Thank you. One of 560 bottles charged from a refill butt. So with that many bottles, it has definitely come from a sherry butt. And the fact that it says butt means it's a sherry butt. On the other side, it is, let's see, single cask from 1991, bottled in 2019. Oh, and this is a special for K&L. Another great buy from K&L. Well, I've never, I've known that it's green. I'm... We have had, we've had a grain before. It's not currently on the shelf. Um, single grain. Well, I'm happy that I've got enough. Let's, for myself. let's compare from the bottle just to make sure we got the right thing. It's actually 54.3%. Wow. This works out at $2.4 per year. 2.4. That is one of our cheapest per year whiskies. It's very simple. But the uh, uh, this. $87. So now that it's we know it's a grain whiskey. But you never like it more than you. Now that we know it's a grain whiskey, do we understand it better? Well, I guess grain whiskey has a reputation for being simple. Oh, I see. And the painting is very simple. Yeah, it's a fry. Serious. Serious. What? Yeah. Tastes um, a little richer. Now I know it's a sherry butt. I've never, I've known that a grain whiskey is, is, I mean, definitely there's no food. It's all about cereal, so it makes sense, grain. But what you get with the age is a much more sort of rounded, integrated thing. I mean, it's classy, isn't it? Yes. But of course, I thought it was younger. No, I know. You thought it was finished. older. Now, the oakiness. It was very, oh, very nice, finished. Okay, let's go over to the chat and see what people are thinking. 
<laughs> First off, a bomb. Although I am slightly relieved that it wasn't Rosebank. Right, mm, let's... I'm, I'm happy that I've got enough. Let's see what is going on in the chat. Let's see. Uh, Pete Morris. Peter Morris. Lovely to hear such a good response to grain. Wow, good value for 27 years. You know, if someone is older and wants to buy a birth year whiskey, which is kind of a thing, isn't it? Like if you were born in 1991, <laughs> which I was not, you could you could work it out for $87. Although, let's see, we bought this one year ago. So um, price is probably up a little bit. Jason Coates, that's about the age that grains start to shine. Yes, wow. apparently. Daniel Alexander, I think that's a new name. Cool. I have all particular 27 single grain Cameron Bridge, one of 633. And this is one of 560. So it's a different barrel, but it's going to be somewhere simple, isn't it? Bobby J's laughing at top shelf, Dustin. Dustin, what have you been saying? Let's see. I like big, big refill butts and I cannot lie. Okay, <laughs> nice. Aquami, what do you think about the tasting notes on the bottle compared to your own? Good question. Okay, tasting notes. Nose, puff candy. Puff. Puff candy. I, I guess like candy floss. You got flip candy. Um, developing to grilled bananas and tangy orange rind. And our notes were dry, sour, fermented. Well, I did call it grape sponge cake. Um, so not too far away. Palette, charred oak, no, with spices, then cereal richness plus citrus fruit. I think that is close to what we were getting. Finish, lingers with ginger and cinnamon and just a touch of milk chocolate. Well, I did- I'm not getting any cinnamon. I did have chocolate powder in there. So, um, the, the cin you didn't get cinnamon? No. I was getting more three the, uh, degrees, something, pepper finish, and uh, put the grassy finish, that about it. but no cinnamon. Yeah, but, but I say we're, we're in the same ballpark. Donna Pass, refill sherry can be very good, especially when they're old. You can still taste a lot of the spirit character. Yeah. Dustin, grains tend to be simple in part because they, they're they uh, put in third, fourth, fifth refill casks. That, that makes sense. Now, having said that, there is a fair bit of colour on that. I mean, it's not without colour, but on the other hand, it's not as dark as Deanston X Bourbon, is it? So... And the Deanston is only 18 years old in uh, probably a more active bourbon cask. So 20, yeah, it could very well be a third or fourth or fifth fill, couldn't it? Okay, jumping down. Rostislav. Fantastic. Who got, who got the uh, pick? So Rostislav, I think it is your choice. Nick Keane, I just bought a 50-year-old for my birthday next month. Oh, an Armagnac. Yes, <laughs> that's another budget stretcher, isn't it? Well done. Okay, Rostislav, we are waiting for your choice of top shelf, bottom shelf, deeper side, fill side, in the middle, to see what we're going to get next. You know, because the, I floated the idea of um, someone maybe guest coming in, Let's pick two bottles so that I have one that we could potentially go with. Let's see. Cameron Bridge is Diageo's workhorse grain for its scotch blends. Ah, so, um, Graham, give us an example. Which blend would Cameron Bridge end up in with Diageo? Whiskey 101. Uh, top shelf Dustin. I still keep standard hedonism as a good comparison. Oh, because hedonism is compass box grain whiskey? Yeah. Oh, move to move. In my experience, charred oak can read as grape on an older whiskey. Oh, oh that Springbank 25 Dustin is grapey, isn't it? Uh, Bobby J. Let's see. 
I'm right with you, but past 52 years ago. Might need to go with my wedding anniversary instead. <laughs> I know how you feel, Bob. We're a couple of years ahead of you. In fact, you and Bob must be the same age. How old are you? Uh, 52. Yeah. Bob, Bob and Deepa, same age. You can Maybe you can split a birth year bottle. Bring the price down a little bit. Teddy KGB. This first Deanson 18 was coloured. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Do we have a different example? No. But that's a good point. You know, the Cavalan. The Cavalan is probably not coloured. Now, it's only it's only six years old, but, you know, it looks almost identical colour. Thanks, Teddy, for that info, though. Right, let's... Uh, I guess Johnny Walker would contain Cameron Bridge. Fair enough. Matthias, that is a, an obvious one, isn't it? Yes. Whiskey 101. A live guest. Great idea, but I'm in Europe. Just post me out 271 samples, and that means I can be ready on time. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Or is that Gervin, Matthias? Oh, now, now I don't know. Right, uh, let me jump down. Rostislav. Middle, bottom shelf, right in the middle. I'm going to pick two. So let's take one from the front. Hang on, was it bottom shelf? Middle, bottom shelf, yes. And one from the top. Just in case. Now, which one are we going to pour? I'd like to have a guest. Is anyone volunteering to be a guest in the US? Uh, that's right, you're going to email me. Maybe for the first one, I'll just pick someone at random and we'll set it up. <laughs> oh, my, my phone is buzzing. Shut up, phone. I guess I didn't, I didn't put it on silent mode. Naughty. Jerry Miller, getting tired of all these people talking about how young they are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. <laughs> is is 54 young? Right. Okay, let's wrap this up. What are we going to pour for the next week's whiskey? Because now I've picked two. Um, I don't quite know what I've got myself into, though. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, this will be the guest one, if we can work it out. So let's say bottle number 156. I'll just put rust on there. Congratulations for getting today's whiskey choice. What have you picked us? Could always be a bourbon, couldn't it? Not a bourbon. But the bubbles, the bubbles are sustaining, aren't they? <laughs> Oh, well, I guess we've been drinking high ABV, so it shouldn't be too much of a shock. We will be back on, what day is it? Today's Sunday, right? We will be back on Thursday to find out what is number 156. Is it, is it Rosebank? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't know, but it's good. We done? You're not going to drink any more after we go. <laughs> Thanks all for watching. We will see you on Thursday. Thursday. Oh. Oh, I'm looking forward to that one.